Folks, hello and welcome to Tavern Chat. I'm your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR, your main proprietor at the Tenkar's Tavern blog. Now, just a reminder, um, 8 p.m. tonight, Eastern, Glenn Halstrom and I will be hosting Dungeons, Dragons, and Discourse, where we talk all things D&D, and uh, we often riff off our... Uh, our viewers who comment, because you can certainly derail any of our trains of thought very easily by doing so. So please hop in and uh, join the fun. So now, up on the screen, if you were expecting another article from Arduin, not today. But that is still a part of the topic here. This is actually from the first fantasy campaign by another Dave, Dave Arneson. And I have it up, and although I have this up, it's more up there to explain what I think I want to talk about, but I want to get your feedback on it, although I'm not actually going to be talking about this tonight. Say that for another night. I know. You're all going, what the... What it is, is, you know, Arduin is huge. It is bottomless. And almost bottomless. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot to it. First fantasy campaign, less so. But what I find myself being drawn to is not so much the game stats. Although with Arduin, I think I want to do some stuff covering some of the magic items and stuff. But it's the essays. I've been covering the essays in the Arduin trilogy because I think that they have relevance or. Um, have had impact even on current RPGs. And the reason why I pulled up this article from uh, the first fantasy campaign from Dave Arneson, uh, I have the second print, by the way. So um, and this is from page 75. And it's, it's a special interest, but really it's um, going into the idea of Instead of awarding points for money and jewels acquired in the depths of the dungeon or hoarding items against the indefinite future, the players will receive no points unless they acquire the items listed below unless it happens to already fall within the area of their interest. And this, to me, reads a lot like uh, AD&D 2E, right? Where, and, and again, I want to go through this article in depth, but not tonight. <laughs> AD&D 2E. Fighters got extra points for defeating creatures, and magic users got points for casting spells. And thieves, I think they're still called thieves in second edition, thieves got points for disarming traps and using their thiefing abilities. And clerics, I don't know what the hell they got points for. And I'm sure magic users could have gotten points for creating magic items and scrolls and all that stuff. That's kind of what well, I guess I got, that's kind of like what was going on there. In this article or essay. So those are the things that I feel that I want to start pulling out of the first fantasy campaign of the Arduin trilogy and beyond. There are more books to it. And uh, I, I have been told that I will be, uh, I, I will be digging in deep apparently. So I'm looking forward to it. So now I could also go over a bit more, I don't want to say much game mechanics, but uh, Arduin also has tons of classes. And we could see, I, I want to do this almost like a historical delve where like, it's doing archaeology and say, hey, I know I've seen these tables in the DCC RPG. Not the same, but obviously they drew influence from these tables in Arduin. Or, hey, I know I've seen this experience point type of stuff in AD&D 2E. And I really get a feeling that they pulled that from Dave Arneson and his first fantasy campaign. So, and, and of course, first fantasy campaign must bring your own rule system. But, uh, we're not going to tell you what the rule system is, but it's d, &D. But we're not working under that license. And same thing with Arduin, right? So they're coming. These are like, oh God! If 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 we if we think of uh, the 
Marvel Cinematic Universe Loki series on Disney Plus, these are like like splits in the timeline, right? This is a this is a possible could have been, but then that timeline died out with First Fantasy RPG, First Fan or First Fantasy uh, campaign. Oh, well, this the Arduin timeline. Well, it didn't really totally die out, but it, it was weak and it didn't branch, and it's kind of like it's all. But what if they weren't? What if they had gone further? What would this have led to? What would Arduin have had led to? So I, I think that these what ifs are very interesting, especially when the what ifs that we're looking at influence what is right now. So that's stuff that I'm thinking of of tackling. But if you want me to look more at some of the the dare I say it crunch, more so at I guess less less the in practice and more the presentation or. or Hey, they, you know, for fans campaign, it's 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 a setting. I got, you know, there's a setting for our Ar- Arduin, right? So you have these things. I want to know if you want me to go for the historical aspect. Should it be more of uh, getting the talking about the crunch? Sometimes they'll overlap, but I want to make sure that I'm on target for what my audience, my my viewers, are looking to see. Leave your comments below, or if you want, and I know not too many people use this, uh, you can leave a voicemail. I will uh, I will definitely listen to them all. They might not all get played, but they all do get listened to. So, folks, on that note, remember, real quick, as I record this, about an hour and 15 from now, Glenn Halstrom and myself, old man Grognard and Tenkar, Dungeons, Dragons, and Discourse. We are every other Friday live at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central. Hey, drop into the chat. Give us a few comments. Let us know. Give us some feedback. Put us put us off on a tangent. We always love it. We are still in the midst of the world of COVID. As always, I implore you, use your common sense. All right? I'm not telling you what that means. Use your common sense. Keep yourself, your family, your friends, your loved ones, your community healthy and safe. Plain and simple. All right. All right. Maybe not plain and simple to some of you. But uh, be safe. Be well. God bless. Roll those dice. And I'm back again later on tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern. Tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern, Rach and I, on Saturday nights, we do Gamer's Health. And uh, it's getting cold, so I think we're going to talk about a little uh, seasonal depression, because I know it affects a number of my, my, my friends and a number of my viewers. All right, on that note, folks, I'm out of here.